Hello, everybody. I'm sorry, there's been a bit of a technical hitch here. Um, basically, I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never done this before, so you'll have to excuse um, the glips that are going to come. I mean, right now, um, I'm looking at myself and my head seems to be jerking like a puppet and my mouth is sort of wiggling. Anyway, listen. I hope I hope you're all there, and um, I'd just like to say welcome to everybody. And um, I want to say, actually, you know, my readers are very, very important to me. And when I go to events, the reason they're so important is that they actually I meet them face to face. So they say to me, "Didn't like that book. Didn't like that character," but then they warm and they go, "Yeah, I did." You know, it's very, very important. For a writer to get feedback, not just from your critics in the papers, whatever, from your readers, because they're the ones that give you the confidence to keep going. It doesn't matter if you get a glowing review in some paper. It's the readers, because they're the ones that go out, buy the book, read it and say, Linda, I love it. I love that character. I want to read more. And so that's one of the reasons that I'm sorry we're having to do it this way, but never mind. Um, I want to thank you for joining me, particularly those all the way in Australia and New Zealand. Um, and I hope I'll, I'll crack on a bit. And um, I first off have to say a big thank you to Mirabu Jin. You probably all think I'm absolutely paralytic now, but I'm not. I'm stone cold sober. But here's toast, nice gin and tonic, but behind me, as you can see on the shelf, is Mirabu Jim. Absolutely delicious. So I'll just have a quick sip. Right, so without further ado, I'm going to read you a little bit from my new book, Buried. Um, and I apparently have to say what page I'm reading from. And I'm reading from page 98. Are you ready? Are you standing by? Jack shut Ridley's office door behind him. This was the only other time Ridley's door was ever closed, when he was in a private meeting. Ridley stood by his expansive windows with his back to Jack. I don't need to know exactly where you are at all times, Jack, but I do at least need to know what island you're on. Ridley moved behind his desk, stuck his hands deep in his pockets, and held Jack's gaze. I mean, that's just about respect, isn't it? Jack had no choice. My parents set off on a world cruise yesterday. It's unlikely Dad will come back. And you didn't? Tell me this? Because? Jack didn't answer. I won't tolerate officers who try to pull the wool over my eyes and don't take this job seriously. I don't think you do take this job seriously, Jack. That's one problem me and you have got. His tone softened. How long is the cruise? Four months. Well, that's no time at all, is it? I'm sorry, Jack, I really am. You okay to be here? Yes, sir. I want to work. I get the strong feeling, sir, that on this one we have to go backwards in order to go forwards. Even as the words left Jack's mouth, he wasn't sure if he was referring to the murder at Rose Cottage or to his own search for his birth dad. Can't put this book down, it's fantastic. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you a little bit about Jack. He is the protagonist in Buried. He's DC Jack War. And you know, when you start on a new novel and a new series, and hopefully, you know, a, a character that's going to continue to create interest and you will want to read more of him and more of him. So I, I wanted to find somebody that um, really had no particular problems in his life no drink problem he wasn't an alcoholic he didn't have a drug problem he was a really happy-go-lucky guy he hadn't got the light on he was working in the police in dorset but he the one love of his life came along maggie 
he fell in love and when she wanted to go to London because she's a medical trainee doctor he said oh I'll go with you and he gets into the Met I want you to really like Jack as a person you know he's great looking he's funny he's casual but the light isn't on he doesn't have much ambition as you heard then from the book you know his commanding officer telling him tearing him off a strip because he's always late his left hand's got the mobile phone and it's never turned I mean he's always on the phone he's skyping or he's talking so and I need you to like him because you're going to go on a long journey with him and you're going to uncover things and secrets and a darkness in his life and you don't really know if he's going to get out of it I hope he will I want him to and I want you to want him to so that's buried now I know some of you have asked me to answer a few questions and I've got them all written here very clearly written because um, I'm a bit of an amateur on this <laughs> as you could probably tell anyway here we go so question um, hang on a second I've got the wrong page question one where do you get your ideas for writing your books I expect from police friends forensic friends or have you talked to some criminals who have a few shady tales to tell that is a question coming from Lynn Wilkinson in New Zealand via Facebook well yeah you know I think by now uh, people know that nothing goes out of my hands without a lot of fingerprints from scientists police officers um, I, I, I need their respect and when you get their respect they give you so much information you just just soak it up they've always got a story to tell you and it's yeah I I have met a lot of heavy-duty villains as well um, that you know you hear you need both sides of the coin really um, it's if you show respect and you ask a scientist to help you over a situation as with the horrendous fire that opens buried um, you know I needed experts to say this is what happened now when you talk to the experts they will sometimes recall a story flip it in flip it in and use the writer go thank you I'll use that so basically it's for me go to source now where do you get your ideas from they're in the newspaper you know, flick through a newspaper don't go through the front page because that's already done look for your stories then they'll come to you you say, but they'll only come to you if your brain is interested there is no point in going and working for 18 two months two years on a project that bores you in the end you've got to find it interesting and then you soup it up um, I mean some of the criminals I've met when I the first time in my life when I began writing I obviously I've been an actress and knocking around I didn't know any criminals the only criminals I really knew were the ones that were often attached to the film units I don't know the prop men it was often a kind of dodgy guy in the props you know you're not I'm sure he's always got a couple of props that are not on the film set for sale etc off the back of a lorry so to speak and there was one great guy and he was called Mickey and I just got the commission to write widows so you know it was so exciting where do I go what do I do and I said to Mickey could you help me find a couple of villains so he said uh, yeah what do you want I said well you do he said well do you want murders burglars what do you want I said well quite heavy duty the heavier they are the better he said all right and there's a very famous pub in London called the Thomas of Beckett where all the old fighters they've got a gym there the Cray brothers used to go there so anyway one, one night I'm in there with Jim with Mickey and he said to me uh, yeah do you remember that story about the guy that fed the uh, bodies to the pigs uh, the actress comes up oh yes yes I remember that didn't remember it at all he said uh, well I know the guy that did that hey 
Billy, come over here and talk to this girl. She wants to do some writing. Bingo. I learned very quickly then, if you're talking to someone quite dangerous, don't bring out your notebook or don't bring out your little tape recorder. Just listen. Let it, again, I keep saying it, seep it into you get it in and then when you get home quickly write and when you write down what you have actually gleaned from these meetings you've got a terrific energy level and you remember the most important points okay question number two comes from prime suspect was perfect with helen mirren but if the tv show was only just being made in the era now who would you pick to play Tennyson and why? This is from Cheza Palmer Allen via Facebook. Well, I would have a major problem casting Jane Tennyson now because you're looking, you've got to go for an actress the right age. So if I'm casting here to go into Prime Suspect with your DCI at her age, I would not want an actress that is seen on in every single project and every single crime show. They bore me to tears. I'm sick of seeing the same actors over and over again. I would want to find someone. Even when I brought up Helen Mirren to star in the original Prime Suspect, there was a lot of, oh, has she done any TV? What has she done? What, what I've seen her in? Mm, don't know. The fact that she was a superior very well-known stage actress went flew over their heads when she came in she was the right age the right weight she knew what she was doing and so bang she made it fly so in answer to your question I would have a major problem trying to find someone that I would immediately say cast her so question three is are you going to write more of the early Jane Tennyson series this is from Miriam O'Brien via Facebook and also asked by Mark Anthony Morgan via Facebook. Um, yes, I'm going to write more Jane Tennyson series. I'm having a ball doing it because um, after Dirty Dozen, which saw her with the Sweeney. And again, I go back to when you go to source, the material you get from going to source to actually finding officers that were attached to the flying squad at the time in the early 80s that I was writing meant that they had a fund of stories they couldn't wait to tell you and it's that by going to source if you're wanting material it comes to you it flows over you and again uh, you know I'm having such a great time writing Jane Tennyson gradually through the years going up to the moment where she came on as DCI Tennyson and I'm still in the 80s and it's very interesting to be writing where there's no DNA there's no mobile phone you've got to work around it and you've got to keep that energy up you know nowadays you've got a plot very quickly within seconds they're on a mobile phone saying well you know they pinged that person over in that area he was there shortly after the murder of you know, they found the murder weapon in the field by his bling, 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 bling. It's quick. It's much slower then. You have to create very strong characters that you want to see again, over and over again. It's characters, characters, characters. But if you go to source, they'll come to you. You'll be sitting talking to a police officer and you'll suddenly go, well, I'll tell you a funny story. I'll tell you a funny story. Oh, you'll laugh at this. Oh, I was on a blag and I did this and did that. Body. Oh, God, it was in a bag. Got it out of the bag. You think, off they go. Off they go. But if you don't respect them, if you don't respect what they're saying and feeding you, disrespect it, distort it when you write it, um, you failed. You must not disrespect any area that you go to for your research okay this is a question number four is will Anna Travis ever make a comeback and this is from Cheryl McKay via Facebook I'm asked a lot about this I mean everybody loved Anna Travis um, and the kind of dodgy relationship she had with her her boss Langton but um, yeah I'm thinking about it 
very interesting because if I'm coming back into Anna Travis, which will feature Langton again, um, I'll be picking up on wrongful death. Now, if any of you have uh, any inclination, <laughs> but if you go and pick up wrongful death and read it, I am writing about the um, fentanyl drug back then. Uh, sometimes when you're writing, you can be a little fraction ahead of yourself. And it's not always a good thing. Nobody had heard of fentanyl when I wrote that. And so the research I did for that, really, it sort of took a long, uh, it was a, quite a difficult script to get over, be, simply because nobody had heard the word fentanyl. And to describe the dangers of it, you know, a pinhead can kill you. And now that it's on the streets and being sold, mixed with ketamine and things like that, it's such a dangerous drug. But definitely want to do more of Anna Travis and Langton. I'm actually thinking of going to set it in Liverpool. <laughs> you never know. Anyway, question five. What TV series is your favourite one right now? This is from Bethan Kiff Davis works at Victoria Bookshop in Haverford West via Facebook. Well, hmm, what do I watch? Well, you know something, I, I sometimes do find it quite difficult watching TV, TV. I love a series called Ultraviolet. It's Polish. It's to me one of the most innovative new cop shows out i love it and it's dubbed uh, but i don't mind i don't mind i'm also um another series that i love watching was called unbelievable what fine acting two great actresses in it um and the other one that i do watch on tv is the super vet <laughs> yes i'm a bit addicted to that because i had a lot of problems with my neck um, I had a lot of discs that were going wrong and I kept having these awful procedures under anaesthetic. You know, it was disc four, disc five, disc six. I had different discs with every specialist that saw me and it was really driving me mad. And I was contemplating contacting the super vet. And I think if he could do what he does to rabbits, I bet he could fix my neck. But anyway, I was very fortunate that I met a surgeon who said it wasn't a disc at all. It was the nerves in my neck. Bingo. I'm OK now, as you can see, wiggling my head. OK, number six. Which male actor would you like to play Jack War if he were to if it were to be a TV drama series? This is from Carol Fry in the UK via Facebook. Well, let me tell you, I've had this actor buzzing in my head for a long time i think he's terrific great stage actor he was starring in uh, the miniaturist on tv quite a while ago but um i'm very sneaky because i've got him reading for audio i've got him reading um buried <laughs> and he's just He's just so lovely. And apparently he said to one of the engineers, this is very freaky, you know. It's as if I am Jack Wall. Little does he know. So that's kind of uh, <coughs> a bit uh, shush. Anyway, question number seven. What advice would you give to aspiring authors in creating characters? Also, can I have your autograph? This is from Melanie Basco via Facebook. And Melanie, let's, I'll give you not only a book, I'll give you buried with my name scratched right across it. Okay, um, aspiring authors, do your homework. You know, if you're an aspiring author, you have to choose the genre you want to go to. You know, uh, <clears throat> what fascinates you, what interests you, if you're interested in forensic, go to forensic scientist. They'll they'll give you material. It's a question of you're going to live with it in your brain for a very long time. You're going to sleep at night with characters jabbering away at you. Um, and so 
you cre you're creating people and you've got to create them realistically and believably and so to me every writer that i meet aspiring writer i say do your homework learn you know you have a beginning a middle and an end how many crime books i pick up and I'm midway and they're going really well and then it's as if they've suddenly got to finish the book and so they produce a suspect out of the hat and it's ridiculous so it's get your story what you want to write what you find interesting and what's inside you 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 are interested in knowing what this person is that you're writing about get him her on the page like them write them meet them I mean the discovery of Dolly Rawlins, you know, who's an iconic part now for an actress and played by the brilliant Anne Mitchell. I was writing Widows and I've already talked about how I went to, you know, the criminals. I went to the prisons and I, I went everywhere searching for characters, but I hadn't found Dolly. I just couldn't find her. And it, it wasn't me. It wasn't any actress that I knew. Uh, and I mean, I'd been around doing every crime show you can think of. And I was pretty broke at the time. And I used to do a morning um, kind of market stall, Ladbrook Grove. And a couple of times people had said, oh, I saw you on TV last night, darling. I was always playing prostitutes in, you know, <laughs> you know thank you very much. Yes, thank you. I'm actually a Shakespearean actress, but I do on TV play a lot of prostitutes. Never mind. Anyway, one day I'm there and my mate from the other stall, she came up to me and she said, yeah, you know, the woman on the fruit and veg, the one with the woolly hat and the mitts and the boots, you should talk to her. Because I, I said to her, I, I'm writing a TV series. <laughs> Why, darling, really? Yes. So she knew. So she said, you go over to her. You tell her, tell her, go on, go to her and say, look, you're writing a TV series and you'd like to talk to her. Because her old man's in the nick for murder. Oh, all right. So off I go. And uh, she's one of these lovely tomatoes, feel them up. I've got potatoes, I've got apples, I've got bananas here. Yeah, come on, darling, with a tough, big woman. So I said, excuse me, I wonder if you could help me. I'm right at Fick Off. Pardon? She's just F off, darling. She told me to F off so many times. She was absolutely abusive to me. <laughs> And I was giving up, apart from my little lovely lady on the other green grocer's stand. She says, go on, go on, talk to her, talk to her. I tried over and over again. And then one day, I don't know why, she came up to me and she said, do you want to have a cup of tea with me, dear? I'll give you my address. You come over. Come for tea, all right? Just quiet. Then she was back on her stall. Lovely tomatoes, come on, don't you touch the spots, darling. So I go over to meet her in a high-rise apartment. Truthfully, rang the doorbell, and I could hear music, opera. When she opened the door, it was a different woman. Beautifully permed hair, immaculate suit. And she saw me kind of go, she said, yeah, surprise, is it? Come in, darling different woman and then I thought oh my goodness I've found Dolly here she is now the added plus to that the more I talked to her and she introduced me to a lot of people some of them very bad guys but what I learned from her was her class so when we're talking about costumes in the costume department you have a costume lady going yeah. Oh, I think uh, she'd be super in sort of lilac acrylic, you know, rather than it. Oh, no, 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 no. This lady is in Jaeger. She wears cashmere. She is really elegant. I've just been told to wrap up. So I'm quickly going to question eight. Would you ever go back to acting just for a cameo? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> No, thank you. And also, this Sue Godman has also asked me via Reader Club, was I in Rent-A-Ghost? Yeah, yes, I was. 
that has haunted me my entire career. I'm giving a lecture to Cambridge University students and somebody's got their hand up saying, excuse me, were you in rent goose Yes, I was. I use acting now, you know, I use it all the time. Um, and I've been told to wrap up. I have another question, but I've been told to wrap up because I've been going on too long. Well, you can see because I love it. Well, look, I'm, I've got another note that I'm supposed to tell you all to do. And that is to keep well, really, you know, keep well. And uh, above all, thank you for joining me. I really do appreciate it. I'm still just quickly looking for one sheet that I have to d use to say, oh, I don't know where it is. It's just I think you could contact me on my website if you've got any more questions for me and you can send them through to me through uh, the club or website you know i've really enjoyed this as you can tell i love to rub it on but god bless you all and um from my heart keep well look after yourselves look after those close to you and let's hope you all stay healthy bye bye